I'm building a tiny vacation home on wheels. Shut up and sit down. Today I am reinforcing uh, the refrigerator cabinet and also the uh, kitchen cabinet with the sink which is currently over here. Um, to do this I'm just going to use this L bracket. It's pretty heavy uh, but it was the only one of this size I could find at Home Depot that wasn't like a shelf bracket. Um, so it's pretty heavy duty so I just screwed in to the um, the back panel this uh, four screws with this and then I'm just gonna put one or two screws on the side just to uh, hold this in place um, you know it's it's relatively cheap uh, and so I'm not really worried you know to drill a bunch of holes in but it already has holes and thankfully they kind of line up a little bit with uh, this bracket so um, I did the same down here with these uh, very small L brackets uh, to secure the base to the wall obviously the back here doesn't you know it's not aesthetically good um, but no one sees it uh, hopefully no one will see it now that the cabinets aren't going to move while i'm driving so this should be pretty secure um, this is just a um, ikea shelf uh, with a little bit of a lip i have the same thing under the bed with the uh, toilet so the idea is just that it holds it in place and i can still open the door of the fridge so we'll see if this works um, just a little bit of reinforcement before my next trip. So this is how it fits in and I'm just going to put two screws in here just to hold it in place and that should be secure enough. This will be coming out when I do full plumbing. Um, just for now it's just got the grey water which is currently sitting on my little patio. So just a lot of uh, kind of updating, um, just kind of redoing the bed. I redid this door panel to make a bigger piece of wood and then cut the doily thing down um, so it's not so significant. Uh, then just kind of um, putting some fairy lights, uh, some extra things in the back of the van. I've got those uh, shoe holders from Ikea, uh, just reorganizing the trunk and uh, just getting this ready for a trip. So uh, fun day, beautiful day outside, finally. <laughs> After a couple weeks of very weird, confusing weather, we finally have something I can work in. Um, but, you know, I just ran on the treadmill this morning instead of riding my bike because I needed to get to work. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, that is super secure. That's not moving. And I can drive with peace of mind, maybe go off-roading, maybe, uh, you know, corner on rails. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't drive crazy, but I could now because my uh, kitchen isn't going to fly off the side and end up in my bed. So right now I'm walking to my bike shop to get my death trap of a mountain bike that almost killed me last year when the chain broke and left me stranded in Louisiana. So thankfully the bike shop that sold it to me finally agreed to fix it. Um, I actually can't really get out of my street because there's a ton of traffic, so I figured I'd just walk, you know, three quarters of a mile over here, uh, which is like actually another 0.6 miles. <laughs> so, a uh, nice day, uh, excited for my trip, and excited to have two mountain bikes on this one. So, I've got a lot of uh, surprises in store of places I'm going that I'm super excited about, meeting up with a friend of mine. Uh, who's going to show me a lot of the trails and that's going to be super cool and uh, I think Prudence is in a good place in regards to the build. I will redo the ceiling eventually when I find a good material. I really don't want to use wood planks and I don't want to use cedar or anything like super heavy. I want something that's just you know super light but looks nice and, and consistent so not really in a hurry to do that. I think I'll just wait a little bit. Uh, at least this ceiling's not going to fall down like the first one did. So this is trip number three. Um, and I think uh, this one's going to be for two weeks. And I think I have a break after that. Um, I may stick around for a week and go somewhere local for another week. Um, but I've got something that might end up keeping me in Houston a little bit more than I had originally planned. Um, 
I might take an assignment, so I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, uh, I got an interview for that. I had a preliminary interview that went really well. So I'm gonna probably uh, have a follow-up interview when I'm back in two weeks. Look at all this traffic. Why would anyone wanna drive right now? Just go for a walk, it's nice. So that's what I'm doing. Yep, got my helmet, new helmet that I got. So I got two bikes, two helmets, um, which also helps with security because it makes it look like two people are in the van. Um, so I'll be doing a lot of boondocking, uh, staying on BLM land, which is Bureau of Land Management. This is uh, free land where you can stay for up to 14 days for free, pretty much mostly in the Western US. Um, there's not a lot of BLM, you know, on the Eastern and Central sides, um, but usually Colorado, Arizona and so on. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to find some really good spots on this trip and uh, maybe run into some other van lifers that I can yell at in conversation from my van six feet away. That's the thing now, like when you're talking to people, you just scream at them because you have to stand so far away. Also, this sign right here that nobody pays attention to, this is part of my bike route at the beginning, um, and no one pays attention. You gotta stay three feet away from the bikes. I'm gonna try to run me off the road like this guy. People, people also ride motorcycles in Texas without helmets, because you don't have to. Not me, I ride a bicycle with a helmet. Dumbasses. <laughs> Seriously, like, oh, it's going to mess up my hair. Yeah, your hair is going to not look good when it's splattered all over the road, stupid. This is my battery powered shower and it's actually using most of the water pretty quickly, but it works, look at this. Oh my God, it's like USB powered because somebody decided to lock the showers, so I can't take a shower. So I fill this up with hot water from the faucet and it works. And I just use all of the water in like five minutes while I'm talking. Okay, back in the car. Ah, oh, it's cold. And I'm in flip-flops, so, you know. So there's currently a crash on the 40 freeway. This is the second big uh, major traffic jam that we've had. But because us van lifers use our own little apps to figure out how to get around this stuff, I'm following these two sprinters who have a bunch of bikes on the back. All the bugs on my window. Um, anyway, so at least I'm not sitting in this. I'm just kind of hauling ass down this road following these, uh, these cargo vans.
just reminds me of an episode of a travel show where this woman went all the way to Machu Picchu and it basically looked like this. Oh my God, I love the snow, but there is nothing to see. It's okay, I got another 45 minutes before I get to the campground. This is really pretty though. And again, I'm in flip-flops. <laughs> I do not wear regular shoes when it's cold. Prudence is doing well. The all-weather tires are uh, stacking up to their uh, reputation, so that's good. So, oh, it is, uh, it is cold out here. So I'm gonna go back and keep driving. Hopefully I'll see something. So these views are amazing. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. And this view over here is amazing. And uh, actually this view is the best. <laughs> I, it was funny when I came in, uh, the park ranger, I was like, he's like, did you know it snows in Arizona? I'm like, I had no idea it was gonna snow this bad. I should have just gone to Colorado or continued in Colorado. Uh, but uh, he looked at my cargo van and goes, you know what, you should be fine, you're self-contained. I was like, you know what that's a really great compliment like thank you for recognizing that i'm not driving a plumber's van so it's funny how out of place you feel when you're in an rv resort and you're in a in a van <laughs> i am looking for the dump station i gotta dump out my toilet because i've got a couple hours to drive to phoenix and i would like to use my toilet on the way so i don't see a dump station that's very bizarre um, and it's early in the morning, so hopefully no one's here and not going to notice me, although it's really blatantly obvious that I'm not in an RV. So I'm just going to drive around. This is really pretty out here. This is somewhere in Arizona on the way to Phoenix. So I'm going to look for the dump station and hopefully they'll let me dump my toilet out. Okay, so apart from my alarm going off, I'm at the end of the park here and it looks like this is a dump station right here. So I'm just going to dump out my toilet and hopefully no one will see. Okay, let's do this. Okay, that was a success. I'm not gonna get shot by some, you know, Arizona redneck or something. She's clean. Okay, we're good. Let's get out of here. So I finally made it through the snow, but for some reason my windshield wiper, um, cars on this road anyway my windshield wiper uh, fluid isn't coming out so this is all the snow and stuff so I got this thing that I got for five dollars from the pilot gas station and I'm just gonna try to not scratch my windshield but just try to ah nothing's coming off what is this stuff yeah it's like dusty so I don't know why that's not it's not working so this isn't gonna work but anyway I was trying to kind of clean this off a little bit so I can see but clearly that's not working so maybe I'll just throw some water on it and then use the windshield wipers so yeah um all right so I'm in the uh, not not uh snowy part of Arizona and I'm about 70 miles from Phoenix so I'm gonna keep going once I can figure out how to see So I'm in Tucson this morning and it's kind of, I don't know, not the best weather. It's overcast, it's like 40 degrees, it's wet. Um, it's not uncomfortable, but you know, I'm trying to get to Saguaro National Park. That's really the main reason I came down to Tucson. Um, so today I'm just driving around for about an hour or two, just kind of exploring the different trailhead opportunities. Um, I was just at the Sabino uh, Canyon Trail. They have a little shuttle that takes you up or you can hike up there if you have a couple hours. Um, so I'll definitely come back to Tucson uh, and you know explore the area. I think if I'm coming from Texas, I could take the 10 freeway, like come out from El Paso area up through Las Cruces and then Tucson and then head north um, if I'm gonna go up to like the Grand Canyon or uh, up into Utah. So. I'm just kind of exploring, getting my bearings. Um, it's kind of a, like a rocky road. <laughs> so 
I think I'm just gonna turn around right here in this neighborhood and head on to the next place, which um, I think is the, I think it's Saguaro. Let me just double check here. I'm trying to figure out, I have two phones. I think everybody should have two phones. So I'm going to, oh, Seven Falls. So yeah, I think I, think I head to the, um, the waterfall and maybe that would be worthy of a hike. I think these are just normal hikes that I can pretty much do when I come back, uh, probably in a couple weeks. Um, so yeah, so then I'm gonna go to um, Seven Falls and then I'm going to uh, Saguaro and then I have to head uh, about four hours to Las Cruces where I will be uh, this evening so I can go to the White Sands uh, National Park tomorrow. So yep, yeah, so I think I'll skip this. Just wanted to get a preview. Um, yeah, it's kind of mucky weather. Uh, it was nice this morning when it was raining. I just kind of laid in my bed over there. <laughs> I was just super relaxed and just like, I don't want to get up this morning. So um, kind of a lazy day, uh, which is good. It's a driving day. So yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. So let's head to the next place. After driving through pretty horrible wind and dust and everything, um, I had the max fan open just to kind of keep everything cool and again just ignore my crappy ceiling. It will be replaced, uh, which is what I'll work on when I get home after this trip, hopefully. Anyway, so the fan is open and it's really cool back here, which is nice, um, but it also spins while you're driving, which is also nice, except when you're in a dust storm, everything it's currently kind of dusty you see how like dusty everything is here um, and then of course it's like dusty on top of here and then I noticed it first of all on my um, steering column you can't really see it but it is dusty everything you see my finger finger marks there <laughs> um, anyway so I really have to do a major cleaning uh, when I get home but I would like to kind of clean it tonight however I need to sweep as well um, because it's also super dusty everywhere and I can actually kind of feel my throat not really feeling um, like feeling a little not scratchy but I can tell that you know I've been inhaling the dust even the the teapot is dusty and this is just from like maybe an hour or two of driving in that kind of weather uh, it wasn't um, you know, it wasn't windy until I got to, you know, just past uh, the New Mexico border. So anyway, I've got a little mini broom so I can sweep, but obviously I need to sweep it outside and that's not going to happen if it's going to be windy. So hopefully the BLM land won't be this kind of weather, but I feel like it will be. So maybe tomorrow when I get to Big Bend or Marfa, one of those two places, hopefully it'll be um, a little more tolerable. So yeah, so I'm just going to rest for a little bit. I'm outside of Starbucks, going to check my email, um, make some phone calls, talk to Harriet, and then uh, go to where I'm staying tonight. So right now I've been sitting here for like maybe 20 minutes waiting. <laughs> I could just go make my lunch, but there's a line of cars behind me. I don't know if you can see. You can't see. Anyway, so just waiting, I guess they're resurfacing the road. It's kind of pretty down here. Very different national park than the other ones I've been to on this trip. Definitely very Texas, <laughs> very flat, uh, as much of this part of the uh, country looks like. But we'll see, I'm only like two miles in. So <laughs> maybe I may also die in this spot if we never move. This may be my last resting place. <laughs> just dying of needing the to toilet and starvation and dehydration <laughs> so ah uh, just waiting it's nice to have a little house though i could probably just go take a nap back there but yeah just waiting no no cell reception unfortunately so i can't even check my email while i wait 
just have to sit. Blah. <laughs> it's okay. I've only been sitting for the last 3,100 miles. Unfortunately, the trail I wanted to do uh, was basically like a um, off-road vehicle trail, just a gravel road. Super easy, but there's nowhere to park near the main road. And I didn't really feel like driving seven miles up a gravel road just to ride down and back up again. So I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna head to San Antonio and I'll come back here when it's uh, not so busy and maybe, um, you know, try some other trails. So no big deal. Uh, it is quite busy here today. So I'm just gonna head out and uh, come back another time. I woke up this morning to this alarm at uh, 5 15 a.m. so I have the Viper security system and you can actually um, select for it to give you notifications like when your vehicle's moving and obviously if someone's broken in or if the alarm is triggered so the security alarm was triggered last night because I'm stupid and I didn't uh, I didn't undo the alarm when I was trying to put gas in the car and obviously the motion set the alarm off and then this morning it said car battery low voltage. Everything's breaking <laughs> on my van after this 3,500 mile trip. So I was like, oh, it's no big deal. So I woke up at seven and I went to go start my car and it's not starting. So thankfully I am close to a city or a town and I called AutoZone and they have a battery that's about $200. And it's a three year warranty, meaning that, you know, I can um, get it replaced if it goes out again for free. Since I have 12 volt appliances and the Jackery battery, um, and I'm constantly draining and, and charging and, and all that stuff, that the $200 one is probably better than the $150 one. So I'm tired, I'm cold, <laughs> and I'm at the end of my trip and I'm right near San Antonio. So I'm heading back to Houston after a bike ride today I'm gonna to go ride my bike to all the missions and up to the Alamo which is about 20 miles but first I'm gonna call AAA and then go over to this auto zone and get them to put a new battery in my my vehicle so thankfully I'm right near home if I was in the middle of a national park or something I would be screwed and SOL so ah uh, anyway so that's just uh, thing number three or number two that has broken on this trip so no worries I can get it fixed um, you know just one of the one of the headaches of having a house I guess I guess this would be a bigger issue if it was actually a, a brick-and-mortar home but yeah you're just constantly fixing and tweaking and um, yeah so thankfully I'm, I'm close somewhere okay so I'm gonna wake up a little bit finish my breakfast which I'm eating <laughs> my cereal lovely and then I'm gonna go get my battery so it's cold <laughs> and of course I parked facing the Sun so I can't sit in the front seats just waiting for um, AAA and then I'll go to get my battery I'm tired I'm gonna go back to bed there's my bed <laughs> so there's the guy gonna fix my battery. <laughs> Zooming around. <laughs> awesome.
380 or 390 miles to a tank and I woke up this morning they did the battery charge and now it says I have 464 miles which I'm not complaining about <laughs> so that's perfectly fine um, I have to go get the uh, new battery put in right now but that's bizarre I know like sometimes when you're in higher altitudes you get better gas mileage so again not complaining perfectly fine with 460 miles to my tank it costs about $60 to fill up so that's pretty nice to get an extra 100 miles out of it back in my vehicle I've tidied myself up a little bit so I don't look so disheveled um, I may have done a u-turn in one of those turning bays it's for official vehicles but I would have had to drive a whole hour down the 10 freeway almost to San Antonio just to turn around and go back to AutoZone and I could have technically gone to San Antonio but I'm like right here <laughs> but unfortunately I was eastbound so I had to go all the way down come all the way back up so now I am driving back to Kerrville and get my battery and then go on a bike ride I did not do a bike ride yesterday obviously because uh, Big Bend just uh, they just don't have good bike trails and the park is just so big and it was way too busy with spring break so I am excited to get on my bike today <laughs> and uh, then eventually get home tonight I haven't been home in two weeks so it's a big day big big day and an Ikea run I need to get a, a side table for outside So as I was taking this bike off, which was correctly put on, and this bike, which was also correctly put on, um, this has snapped. This is metal, and I've only had this maybe a month, and this is just my third trip, and it's broken, like the whole thing. You can see it, like it's just kind of snapped off. And this is not even a very light bike, or a very heavy bike, it's pretty light. So I'm a little confused why, you know, so now I have to kind of lock this bike up since I'm riding the other bike right now on a trail and I have to lock this bike to the other bike or the other, um, I don't know, lever or whatever it's called uh, that holds it on. But this is horrible. I just got this and it broke already and I haven't driven really that far. So, you know, I mean, I have a proper tow hitch that I put on professionally and the whole thing is snapped off and that's not going to hold the bike so now i can only use one bike maybe although this bike also you know i mean it looks like this has been welded more than the other one i'm not quite sure so hopefully alan will replace this for me it's really disappointing okay now that i'm home i gotta figure out how to take this off i kind of permanently put it on i put a little like extra security thing which I'm hoping I remember the combination or maybe I'll have to get my bolt cutters or something um, you know it's just kind of a little dirty from just the dust and everything but as you can see before it was the bit that snapped off the arm the inner arm you can see it right here the whole thing just kind of cracked and there's actually like metal that came out too like holes like it just disintegrated and it shouldn't ever do that you know I mean I just you know really disappointed um, out of focus there we go so I'm gonna take this off just kind of clean it up and then undo some of these bolts um, so I can put it back in that box it's kind of like putting toothpaste back in the tube um, and then just go take it over to UPS and then we're good so I'm back home in Houston and my daughter Harriet will be hanging out tomorrow so we're gonna build a fort we already started to build a fort a little bit so you know keep out restricted area um, but just wanted to let you know that not only was this bike awesome to ride today in a very boring downtown concrete bike trail with no elevation and too many people I'm just kidding actually no it's you know it's nice to be home every now and again but I miss the mountains, I miss 
proper trails. I miss getting dirt in places where you're like, how did I get dirt there? Anyway, so just want to let you know that I had uh, notified Amazon that the bicycle rack had broken. And so thankfully they sent me a new one literally within a day. And all I have to do is take the old one off, give it a good wipe down and put it in this box and then take it to UPS and then send it back. So I lucked out when I bought this because it was only like $110 instead of like four or $500. And they sent me a brand new one. And so always check the return window. I had like a four month return window. I just got this in January and I think I have until April 19th uh, to return it. So super happy. Also my ice skates are here. <laughs> I would love to be able to go ice skating while I'm in the van. Obviously not in the van, but you know, find some good ice rinks. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't in any places that had rinks that were open. Um, so I usually just ice skate here in, in Houston. Um, but I got some other stuff, some goodies, and just super excited. So I'm gonna go clean the bike rack, try to take it off the back. I was hoping I wouldn't have to remove it ever. I don't care what you say about Ikea. This little $5 toolbox will save your life. The first thing I'm doing is unscrewing and trying to take some of the weight off so that it's easier to go under here and undo the hitch, which will be the hardest bit. This is quite heavy. So I figured if I just undo all the notches and screws and all that stuff and just take the extra bits off, it should be a lot easier to uh, just remove it and put it in the box. And I have to dismantle it anyway so it fits back in the box. Okay, she's free, so I can take this off now. Maybe, <laughs> not with one hand. Hang on, let me do this. Okay. So not quite number five is alive, but it's close enough. I realized I couldn't undo the rest of it without this little alum key, which I got from the new box. So I forgot that the uh, guys that did my tow hitch uh, didn't give me the tools that were in the box. So no worries, I got this one, so it should be good. Unfortunately, when things break that aren't supposed to be taken apart, it's impossible to take it apart. The alum key, as you can see, is wearing away and I need this for the new, uh, the new one, so I'm just gonna box this up the way it is. I'm gonna go to UPS and see if they can just give me a gigantic box uh, and put this in. Uh, I think I'm done with this for now. <laughs> so that's about as much effort as I'm gonna put into this broken, broken thing. Look, it's even cracked under here. That's horrible. I hope the new one doesn't crack because that would really suck. I was very fortunate that when I had the tow hitch put on by Discount Hitches here in Houston, they assembled my bike rack for me as well. And they seemed to do it in like 10 minutes. I've been sitting here for 20 minutes right now trying to figure out which bit is which. And it is super heavy. And of course, as you maybe know or don't know, I have uh, spinal injuries from the army. And I also have a rotator cuff tear and another muscle injury plus i can't feel my left hand in my um uh, due to injuries from a, a horrific brutal assault in uh september 2019 so it is now march 2021 and i still have limitations on my left side so trying to lift this up and hold it and try to screw in these um this hardware is not enjoyable and it's raining outside and I don't have a, a way to kind of drive this all over to um, to the discount hitch place and you know politely ask them if they would do this for me again so I'm gonna try to do this myself I may be here all afternoon which is fine I'm waiting for the rest of the slats for the ceiling to dry um, and then I have to box up the old broken bike rack where the arm broke so like on the other one this bit which looks like it's welded a lot more on here. Um, the one that I had before actually snapped off <laughs> after like three trips. So I had it less than a month and it already broke. So anyway, I'm gonna try to figure this out and hopefully I can assemble this. I need to leave in two days. So it is Wednesday and I'm leaving Friday morning for seven days of bike riding in Texas. 
and I need to have uh, the bike rack done so I can put both bikes on it. Um, I could try to store the bikes inside the van. I would rather not because I just don't want to mess anything up in there and my bikes get kind of muddy and plus it may rain on this trip, which is fine. But anyway, so I'm going to try to do this. Uh, I may miss a birthday <laughs> trying to put this thing together. This is horrible. I am, I am like so done with screw driving and hammering and painting and all of that. It's been a, it's been a journey. It's been fun to learn it, but I commend anybody that does this for a living. I am much happier just building websites on a computer. <laughs> like that, that is my happy place. This is just, um, this should not have to be a second time around. This, this bike rack should not have broken, but thankfully I got it for $110. Right now it's about four or $500 on Amazon. So I need to get this assembled. I need to mail back the other one. Otherwise Amazon will charge me for that one. And I do not want to be charged almost $400 for a broken bike rack. So, all right, let's do this. Okay. That took about 10 minutes to, um, to get these ones in. So I have two more here and then I have two more on the other one and then the rest should just lock in. So this is just the hardest bit right here. It's just getting these on here. Um, on the previous one that broke because of all the like road mud and stuff, I actually can't undo these. So I had to buy these gigantic wardrobe boxes from Home Depot to try to fit the previous uh, bike rack because it won't fit into this original box now because I can't undo this bit which comes out this big long arm right here so it's like putting toothpaste back in the tube not fun at all part number two has been assembled and now I just have to put the wheel uh, the wheel locks I guess where the front wheels go this is the downside or the bane of having two bicycles and being an avid mountain biker um, but I am glad that I have both bikes. I have the Trek bike, which is kind of my fancier, maybe a thousand dollar bike. And the other one is just a $500 Reed bike that um, is kind of my throw around bike. So that one I use for the trails, like for the, um, the slower trails, because it is kind of a slower bike. And now that I have the Trek bike fixed, um, which are both kind of over there, sorry for all my daughter's toys you know, anyway, um, we have a lot of Legos and stuff and painting and my projects. So the bikes are currently in her bedroom. Um, so the Trek bike is my faster bike and I use that for a lot more of, um, the longer flatter rides. Um, and then I use the Reed bike just for my mountain biking. I would like to get, you know, specialized bike or something that's a little bit fancier, I guess but I tend to destroy bikes pretty quickly in my life. And I've been riding bikes ever since I was about two years old. Uh, I used to race BMXs as a kid, uh, as you can see. Yep, I was a little badass. <laughs> and so I would be like racing onto the, this is in London, and I would race onto the racetracks with my, uh, with all the, the big kids. And then like the, the other parents would like yell at my dad and be like, get your kid off the track. <laughs> and I'd just be like, pedaling like crazy. So I was a little, little badass. Anyway, so I still ride bikes. I love it. And uh, on rainy days, I'll run on the treadmill. And then on the nice days, I will be on my bike out and about in Houston. I do about 23 miles or a 38 mile uh, concrete trail. Um, so it's just basically to get stamina and speed. Um, really no trails where I can go up and down mountains here in, in Houston, unfortunately. So. Um, but I get spoiled when I travel. I get to do all of those uh, in the canyons up in the Panhandle near Amarillo, in Caprock Canyons and Paladuro State Park. And also when I got up into Colorado and New Mexico and all that. So yeah, um, it's worth the wait. But in the meantime in Houston, you know, right now it's kind of raining outside. So a little gloomy day, um, but I will uh, be on the road in two days. Now I'm trying to get the wheel arms in and this is where my injuries just start to overtake me. I, I'm i stiffening up in my right shoulder, or my left shoulder rather, and the pain is pretty unbearable. Um, even just from doing menial tasks like screwing in these bolts, which took me probably about 45 minutes. Um, took about 
10 minutes for each pair um, and then trying to get this bit in and this is super heavy and you really can't just like turn it on its side because you don't want to bend the arms again which I think maybe is what happened when discount hitch maybe put it together I don't know I'm not gonna blame them but I think just the way it's made is that if you put too much pressure on these arms you know outside of what they're supposed to do which is to hold the bike up I think that's when you start bending and cracking this area so I don't know um, I really don't want to take a break because I just want to get this done and get it on the bike before it gets dark um, or on the back of the van rather so yeah this is just the horrific pain if you deal with chronic pain or injuries or disabilities I you know my heart goes out to you it it's not fun and these are completely preventable injuries caused by assault by being horrifically beaten by two grown adults which I will I'll do a video about that later but you know it's it's very hard to talk about I went through eight months of PTSD therapy because of it and still triggered occasionally um, right now this could be triggering you know because I'm reminded of the pain but you know I'm trying to push through that's how I kind of deal with all this stuff I you know I don't use medications I don't use substances I don't drink I don't do anything that you know would be I guess self-medicating um, I use exercise and experiences to get through pain but right now this is this is a challenge trying to get this thing together it's not fun I'm actually a little bit upset um, but you know I, I'm gonna push through and then I can say later down the road, hey, look, I did it. <laughs> my bike flies off the back of my van. Uh, hopefully not. Another thing that broke is the shiplap. So I think it's because I used these hex screws, these self-tapping screws, which I really didn't need to do. I mean, I could have just gotten like a one inch screw or something. Anyway, so this is cracking here. Um, I don't know why. I think I probably should have put some kind of lacquer or varnish or polyurethane or some, some kind of um, coating or paint, um, but I think it would have cracked anyway. I think it's because it has these little like decorative pieces of tree stump. Another one right there. And uh, it just has it like throughout. And I think that's why, um, why it broke. It also cracked up here, but that's because I did a crappy job. So it's not a major player. I'm actually going to get a shelving unit and put it right in front of here. After I get my plumbing put in, I need to put my um, faucet right here. So I ordered that and I got a whale pump or some kind of foot pump. Um, so that'll be better since I don't have, you know, uh, electrical uh, system, proper electrical system. So I can't have a proper um, water pump which is fine because I really just don't want to deal with having to fill up the water every two days anyway so that's broken everything else is pretty fine um, so that's yeah just stuff that I've got to fix when I get home hopefully um, I'm dealing with a dead battery right now and so I'm just kind of using my Jackery to charge my phone I would like to make a cup of tea which right now my sink is my storage so I think I'm gonna try and make a cup of tea while I wait for the uh, for the guy to come jump my vehicle and I can go over to AutoZone. I'm in my SUV right now. It's a little dirty in the front, but I was wondering why this thing had come off. And then I realized there's a giant rock inside that I think hit my vehicle and knocks the, um, this thing out the way. Like on this side, it's fine. But on this side, it's been locked in. So that's nuts. Look at that damage right there. I didn't even know I hit a rock. 